Hi, it's Peter here. Seven tips and tricks about night photography. And let's get right into the business. Tip number one, consider having a tripod. Even though the modern cameras of today have a very effective image stabilizing either in the center or in the lens, it's still sometimes a good thing to have a tripod. Let's say like if you have an Olympus camera, you can go all the way up to two to three second handheld shots because the IBIS is so good. But what about if you want to do a 30 second exposure, then you need a tripod. I personally have a tripod in my bag and that's because then I have the ability to take those 30 second exposures if I want. I personally use a Peak Design travel tripod and then I also sometimes take the Gorilla Pod with me because it can be attached to any rail or anywhere or really low on the ground. And tip number two, bracket your exposures. The contrast and the dynamic range that there is in a scene, in a city, for example, when you have all these bright holiday season lights, Christmas lights on, and then you have the dark places where there isn't that much light. It is really hard time for a digital sensor to capture both of these. But when you're bracketing your shots, take a shot that the highlights are not blown out and you have still have a de and another shot, for example, with details in the dark, then you can choose which one to use. Sometimes you can use the other image and then sometimes the other image. But you can also blend these two images together, which is called exposure blending. You use the brighter image for shadows and you use the darker image for highlights. And then you will have an image with more dynamic range than just one image could do. And of course, you can use HDR either manually or automatically. It depends what camera you use. But Olympus camera, for example, has a very good HDR mode that you can use to bracket automatically the images together to get that high dynamic range image. And if you're doing it manually, changing the exposure by hand, then tripod is recommended. And also tip for this, turn off the image stabilizer from your camera and from the lens. Because if you have it on a tripod and you have the image stabilizer, the image crop might be slightly, slightly different and it is really a hard time to align all those images together so there is no ghosting. So turn off the IBIS if you use tripod for multiple exposures or exposure uh, bracketing. And then tip number three, use manual focus. Yes, I know modern cameras are pretty good focusing also in the dark. But sometimes it might not find a certain place to, or the right place to focus because there are lights all over the place. It might be a, a wrong place that it chooses because of course it's automatic. It doesn't know exactly where you want to focus. So try to learn manual focus. And of course, if there is focus peaking and magnify, use those too. So that will help you. And the same goes when you do an exposure bracketing. It's a good thing that you have everything on manual so that the focusing doesn't change to, between the exposures, between the exposures that you're going to blend together. The result will be a lot better if you have it on manual focus and all the images are focused at the same exact point. And tip number four, play around with different shutter speeds. You know, light streaks and moving lights are really interesting in an image. It looks really great in most cases. But how long should the light streaks be? Sometimes a shorter one is better. You, you still have the sense of motion and you might see a thing that is actually moving and but still there are some light streaks and that can be affected by choosing different shutter speeds. Very, very long shutter speeds. You might have the light streaks go from all the way from the other edge to the other edge of the image or you might want to have just the short light streaks in the in the in the somewhere in the image then different shutter speeds can achieve that and don't forget olympus users try the live comp you haven't tried it yet i do have some videos about live comp over there if you don't know what it is and tip number five use as low iso as possible it doesn't mean that you need to do low iso 64 for example it might mean that you need to use 3200 but use the lowest iso that is possible so that you can get the combination of uh, shutter speed and depth of field you might need to rise up the iso but try to use as low as possible i wouldn't be so worried about how using high isos today because any camera can be corrected with great noise direction software like dxo pure raw or Topaz Dino's AI, both of those work really great. For example, this image, it was made with XZ2, a small Olympus compact camera from 2012. I had ISO 800, which in today's standard is not very high, but remember, it's a small sensor and a nine-year-old camera. And look at this image. 
I used PhotoLab 5 from DxO to use this. It has the same noise reduction features as DxO Pure Raw. And I used some other tools that it has. It's a great, great image software or image editing software. And look at this image. It's basically clean. I'm very happy about the new camera that I have. And when I use it together with image, image uh, not image, but noise reduction, That's it's it gives me really nice and clean images even with quite high as quite high iso very happy and if you use lightroom you might find that lightroom does a very good job too that might be enough for you because you know we're different we like a different amount of noise which is not always that bad it can look kind of nice and give some character too when there is some structure in the image so noise noise is not always bad and tip number six stop down to get these nice stars it's not usually recommended to stop down to f16 to f22 especially with with small sensor cameras because the diffraction kicks in and it will uh, reduce the noise uh, not the noise but the image quality but sometimes if you want to get these nice stars you need to stop down to f8 and, and more this differs from different lenses the new om system 20 mm f1.4 lenses especially good at this look at this image very very nice stars it renders there will be an extra tip after tip number seven, surprise. And also another surprise. I will have an assignment for you and I will tell you what it is and what it is all about. So stay tuned. And tip number seven, set the white balance manually. You know, most modern lights in the city are LEDs and their color temperature and color faults might be quite huge. They might be missing some wavelengths from different colors and, and the colors can be anything. And that can fool the auto white balance. What I always do is either set it to the white balance to daylight or tungsten. Then I will have consistent white balance on every image and the different LED lights won't fool the white balance. Of course, if you're shooting raw, you can always correct this. But I think it is a lot better starting point to use some presets from your camera and all the modern digital cameras have presets for white balance. And then the extra tip before the assignment, be on location on time. What I mean by this is that the best time to photograph is during the blue hour. That's the time when the balance between the city lights and the lights in the sky or the, or the luminance of the sky are quite close to each other. So you don't need to bracket your exposures that much. You might get along with only one exposure. And also the bright or dark blue sky will be a nice contrast to the warm tungsten lights that are in the city. And that's why being on time just before the blue hour starts, you can make your composition and just wait for the perfect moment. Sometimes when you go nighttime, cityscape shooting, you might end up getting only one image. It depends on how long the blue hour lasts. And luckily here in Finland, the blue hour is actually a, an hour, sometimes even more. So we have plenty of time to do our shots. I know that in closer to the equator, the blue hour might be a blue minute. So you have less time to do the images and you might only end up with one image. But that's, of course, that's totally fine. But of course, there are always exceptions. When the sky is pitch black it can also be a nice contrast to the uh, yellow lights on the on the you know, buildings and the street lights and everything like you see on this image i think the black sky is totally okay with this it would have gone also with the blue sky but try to avoid the time when there is a lot of clouds and the city lights are uh, kind of like reflecting from the sky that looks ugly that is more of a light pollution which is which is nasty looking i think but try to be there on time so that you can get that blue hour moment. It's, I think it's the best time of the day. The magic of the blue hour is, is magnificent. And then to the assignment. Yes, you guessed it. Send me an image, a nighttime image. And the purpose of this assignment is to go out and shoot. It's not the best practice to go to your archives and sit at their computer and choose the best image from the past. Try to make a new image that was taken this December. I really appreciate that. And all the instructions on how to send your image and, the, and when the live stream is, most likely it will be on the 28th of December. It's a Tuesday night and I will try to 
have it on on that time but i can not promise it because you know christmas time and we have, we will have some relatives over and it, it depends how how long they're staying so we will see when that is but follow my channel my social media my blog and everything to find out when that is but i will put a link in the description it will be the first link in the description and here are some more videos for you to watch but hey thanks for watching and bye for now